Hey, you wonderful people. My name's Clayton, and today we're gonna to talk about the difference between a sativa, an indica, and a hybrid plant. Now, if you're looking for a more basic education, like sativa activa, or indica in the couch, check out my original video, Basic Cannabis Education. So first, let's talk about the three species of cannabis that we know. Cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. So, back in 1753, the cannabis plant was believed to only have one species, and it was Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus who discovered it and called it cannabis sativa. But later, in 1785, French scientist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck discovered a second species and named it cannabis indica. And then, in 1924, a group of Russian botanists discovered a third species. This hardy and fibrous plant containing little to no THC was named Cannabis ruderalis, also known today as hemp. Looking first at the Cannabis indica plant. Cannabis indica plants are more suitable for colder climates with shorter seasons. Originating in India, Cannabis indica plants were found in Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. A growing and flowering cycle takes three to five months, and Cannabis indica plants usually grow to be about six feet tall. The smaller structure and shorter growing cycle of the Cannabis indica plant makes it easy to grow indoors. That brings us into the Cannabis sativa plant. Cannabis sativa strains originated in equatorial countries like Colombia, Mexico, Thailand, and Southeast Asia. A fully grown sativa plant can grow up to 20 feet tall outdoors and has a growing and flowering cycle of almost six months. It's because of these factors that a lot of cannabis sativa plants are crossbred with their cannabis indica cousins, reducing their height and growing time, making them a lot easier to grow indoors. But as many home growers know, it's not not just about the plant. Climate, soil type, fertilization methods, and harvest times all affect the plant's chemical composition. So even if it has the same name as a strain you've had before, the cannabinoids, the flavonoids, the terpenes could all be different. Keeping a journal or a log of the different strains you've tried and any testing information you might have on them will allow you to start to tailor your medication around your specific needs. And furthermore, you'll have the data to replicate those feelings down the road. Now, when it comes to Cannabis ruderalis, botanists tend to disagree whether or not it's its own species or just a subspecies. Native to areas in Asia, Central and Eastern Europe, and Russia, Cannabis ruderalis can grow in practically any environment, and flowers automatically within one month of being planted. Now, these flowers are not very big and produce little to no THC and a very small amount of CBD. As well, Cannabis ruderalis also only grows to be about two and a half feet tall. So, to recap, whether a strain is a sativa, indica, or hybrid does not determine whether it is energizing or sedating. However, this belief is so deeply rooted into mainstream cannabis that most patients make their selections based on this information. Centuries of crossbreeding these species and subspecies of cannabis means that most cannabis nowadays is a hybrid of some sort. Even if you could find a pure sativa or indica strain, it's the chemical composition of the plant that will most dictate the kind of experience you'll have. While the placebo effect can play a large part in the way that a particular strain makes you feel, the main factors are the strain's chemical profile, your unique biology and tolerance, your dose, as well as the consumption method. This is why it's so important to have access to the test results of the different strains you try. Knowing the percentages of the cannabinoids and the abundant terpenes will give you the best chance at predicting how a certain strain will make you feel. Well, I hope that gives you some insight into the different species of cannabis out there. And as always, if you learned something today, please like and share this video for everyone to see. Next week, we're gonna talk all about terpenes, what they are, why they're important, and go over some of the most common ones found in the cannabis plant. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell beside it to be notified next Tuesday when it's up. And if you're in Canada and aren't getting your cannabis legally yet, check out these videos from earlier to learn a little bit more about it. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.